So, hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Greg. I'm Mitchell. And we are here with the Sierra project once again. It's finally time for it to go back home to where all the other projects are so we can actually do something with it when and if we have time. A um, little update on this, I guess from the start, we'll try and do this concisely here. A little bit of work was done off of camera before I started filming this project. So yes, uh, new starter motor, new PCM, which turned out to not actually fix the problem anyways. Uh, fuel crossover tube is in the videos there as well as new Delphi fuel injectors and the fuel pressure regulator is all there. Right now it's just running off of a plastic pail of gas in the front seat. Um, no point in putting the fuel tank hook back up to it because the plan with this one is the back half is going to get cut off and make a box trailer because the box is in good shape. Uh, we'll sell some of the uh, components of the front that are still good, the cab's rotten, and then the plan with this 6 liter Vortec engine is to get a miniature truck, hopefully a Mazda B2200 or maybe 23, depending on what we can get that's in good shape. Uh, but that's the plan, we'll dump that engine in a small truck, make something that's going to go super fast basically, but still be legal for the road. So yeah, we're going to try and get this started to be able to drive it onto the trailer. If not, we can use the tractor, drag it out, and then winch it on if we have to now that we've got that winch, which we just used for the caravan video. So yeah, I think that about does it. Let's see if it will actually start. It hasn't run in six or eight months, I think we figured out. Thanksgiving of last year, I think is the last time I ran it. I don't think I even drove it. Canadian Thanksgiving. It's been a while. Canadian Thanksgiving. Yeah. Not American Thanksgiving. Um, but I started up just fine then and it had been a while before that, so I don't have any real concerns. I did check the fuel pump and it is still pumping, so we'll uh, see if we can make a go here. Let it warm up a little bit and then get it out and then we can do a walk around and show you the whole truck in a little more Cause, detail. Because we haven't done that so far. Yeah, so now we're going to try and start this thing up. The starting procedure for this truck, like we've mentioned before, is you have to basically jump start it. Actually, I don't think I mentioned that in this, in this reel. So yeah, the, the wiring for the starter motor is all rotted away to nothing. So the enable wire from the key to the solenoid over there actually isn't even connected. So I just ran jumper wires from the enable terminal all the way across the engine to here. And then I just power it. And I think, I don't know why, something to do with the electrical. You have to turn the key to crank at the same time as you touch the jumper to make it actually go. I think it's an ignition lock, maybe. Maybe something. I mean, you got to turn it on either way, otherwise you don't have ignition. Or a security system or something. It's, I don't know. Got too much electronics on it already. We might take this engine and convert it to uh, carbureted. But we'll see. It'd be fun to convert it to propane. One thing at a time. <laughs> All right, let's see if this will. Here. here goes nothing. Starter is not working, which is fantastic. Well, we're off to a good start. So, as you can see, the jumper is kind of run down oh, yeah, there. I forgot the power for it. <laughs> oh, that would explain a lot. See, this this is also because the main battery cable from the battery to the starter has no end on it. So I took this old booster cable and clamped it to the starter on that end. This was supposed to go on the positive, which I just forgot because it's been so long. So after this, it'll work just fine. Supposedly. No, GM thing. It's an old GM. Yeah, it's an Not very well maintained, apparently. Well, it's, uh, I don't even know when it last ran before I got it a while. Anyway, when he bought this, he didn't even know if the engine would ever run again. No, it didn't. Run, wasn't running when I got it. I spent a lot of time and way too much money trying to make it run. Now it runs not too bad, but it also has open exhaust, so it's very obnoxious. How loud is it? <laughs> Pretty loud when you jazz it. Now it'll work. Let's start turning the fuel on first. Live power.
All right, so we've got the Sierra moved out here, and uh, now we're gonna give you guys a tour of it. So yeah, it's actually, if you take a step back and look at it, it's actually pretty solid. Ignore the fact there's no rocket. But uh, like, as far as the, the hood's got a little bit of rust on it, I think. Yeah, it's rotten through over there, so it's not much use, but fenders aren't too bad, doors really aren't bad. We can probably sell most of that stuff if now, anybody wants to buy it. The fenders are covered in plastic, so there's no way to really uh, know. Well, there is because the guy actually took one of the flares off the box, which we'll see when we get there, to show that there's no rust oh. on the fenders, which is amazing. Yeah, door is actually pretty good. I don't think there's any rot on the uh, little bit on the door. A little itself. bit on the door, but it's not bad, really. It could still be used for somebody that has a big hole in the door where it got crunched. It's an SL model, so base model. The box has got a lot of dents and some surface rust now because the paint's gone, but there's no rod in it. The bed is full of leaves now, which we should clean out when we get back, but the bed is solid. There's no rot, which is amazing. And it's an eight foot box, so it'll box. make a good trailer. Yeah. The bumper is pristine, which we'll just keep with the trailer when it becomes a box trailer. So you got something to work with and it already has a receiver on it. So we could do another small trailer behind if we wanted to. A receiver with a bee's nest nice inside. Bees, wasp nest in the uh, the muffler and the tailpipe and everything are like mint. But they're but somebody not, cut the cats off. They're not connected. Yeah. yeah, this is the flare that the guy took off. I think before I got it, there's some, some paint chips here, but yeah, it's solid. solid as heck. So that's why we're going to use this one as a box trailer thick thick frame yeah and yeah it is three quarter ton so it's better yeah. than this the, one which is just a half ton Ford so to, show them that to answer our question from a previous video about the difference between half tons and three quarter tons this frame is a lot thicker like in height really than the one on my dad's truck that's a half ton yeah, so they I don't I don't know if they make the steel gauge any heavier, but they make the frame taller so that you've got more strength as far as load capacity goes. And as we move to the front here, I'll have Greg open the door. 
Okay. Show you guys the cab. Not much to look at. It's missing some interior pieces. Here's our fuel pail. It's your typical of the era GM truck interior. The seats are actually in quite good shape. I'm not sure why that one. Somebody well, must have put a cushion under this, under the material, but the interior is in great shape otherwise. We can sell those seats, I'm sure. Yeah. And the dash, I don't think, is even cracked or anything. You can show them the yeah. dash from the other side. They'll come around too. to show There's that. There's a bench seat in the back when I, from when I got it. I don't know what it's for. Or well, it was a, couldn't have been from, unless the guy owned a double cab or something. Oh, look at this. GMC. Does that have a manual on it? it? Oh, that's good. Not the manual. Warranty and owner assistance information. I don't know if there's anything in the glove box, but that's cool to have a house that's got. As Mitchell throws the camera away. <laughs> I'm having problems today. It's like the fourth time of throwing something. Almost <laughs> eating. There's your beautiful, pristine grill. Yeah, it's actually amazing that it's not damaged. It's even. The GMC even still has the kind of shine to it. It's just it's missing a couple of clips here. I don't think this is actually broken. It's just missing the clips. And on the higher trims, I think where these holes are, where the tow cables, the tow, tow hooks. hooks. I don't think this one yeah, will have you it. Can have them. I think you can have them here. And you can probably have them there as well. I'm surprised it doesn't have them because I think my S10 from the factory had hooks in it. This is an SL model though. It probably wasn't optioned with it. I don't remember what package the S10 was. Yeah, it's actually, I mean, other than the cab, you can open that door too if you want to show the... Of course, we're going to get the nice... There's the dead starter. The dead starter that's created all. And yeah, just your typical of the era GM gauge cluster. It does have cruise control, interestingly, for base model. Yeah, I don't know if it works or not, but... Yeah. Can't see because of the leather, the vinyl floor is still there, but there's no floor panel left on this side of the truck. So if it was going to go on the road, it would have to have a new cab, a whole cab or at least four pan and rockers on this side, which is probably a similar it. amount of work to the silver truck nice. to get it road right, get it road worthy. Oh, that was, oh, that's the other thing I put in was a uh, crank shaft position sensor. I don't know if it was actually the problem again because I think there was several things going on at once. Greg was doing what you're not supposed to do and threw parts at the problem. <laughs> <laughs> I was working in the winter in the cold, okay. And was, down there is your shift for the four-wheel four drive. Drives, yeah, which four-wheel drive works great. I almost got it stuck actually in, in uh, at, that was Easter of last year. We went through the, where you went, through that path into the field and I got about 30 feet and she just stopped in four wheel drive and it was just screaming. But it's it's good if it's got good tires on it. So yeah next we're gonna set up an angle and we're gonna see, see if, if we can, can back get this, this on, on there without backing it right up over into the truck.
So, with minimal. Are we in the frame? Nobody knows because nobody can see the camera. We hope we are. <laughs> with uh, minimal dicking around, other than with the exception of one putting truck into park and then not being able to get it out. Which is common with automatics if you're on a steep hill and you don't use a parking brake. And we don't have parking brake and have brakes. You'll, uh, you'll get the parking pin stuck against the can. <laughs> so we just had a little trouble from the tractor to get it into neutral to start it up and then go over the rest of the way. Surprisingly enough, the uh, back of the blue truck didn't go down nearly as much as I was expecting, especially since we've got the heaviest part of the truck almost to the pivot point, so that part was interesting, but other than that, it's on and it is changed. We're going to close stuff up, go get some lunch, and then we'll hit the road to get this thing home. We're back. We're back after a perilous journey. Noisy. Six hour journey. You can probably hear our voices are now different. <laughs> we're not going to be able to talk for the next two days, but that's fine. So now we're going to unload the truck and then I'm going to leave because I want to get home before it gets too late. Yeah, and I got to go to it's gotta go back two to hours. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, we're going to remove this and we'll do a final outro and then we're done. Enjoy.
there. We got it off the trailer in one piece and had a little fun with it. And that, that, actually, that actually worked really well. I just left it in drive and we let it out. Perfect. And as we've mentioned before, the reason we had to do it that way was no brakes. Yeah. I mean, we could have let it go crashing down, but it probably would have bottomed out the trailer hitch on the ramp. Well, your truck was lifting up too, so it would have been probably bad for it as well. It's fine. It's off now. So, who knows the next time you'll feature this vehicle on the channel. Just gonna find time to do the box trailer, and the engine will be part of a different project. So, yeah, we'll probably we'll probably leave it in one piece for a while and use it kind of as a shop truck for anything we need until we're ready to actually pull the engine, basically. Because I guess we could make it into that just drivable cab. We'll see. Without further ado, if you like this video. Please hit that like button, subscribe, drop a comment if you have a question or something to mention about the video. Hit that bell so when we post another video, you're actually going to know about it and not have to go wondering when's the next video. And check out the website that is unfinished, dvproductions.ca. And uh, we will get back on posting to the Instagram. Productions one That's another way for you to get notified of videos. Yes. So, yeah. We'll see you in the next one. The black flies are going to kill us if yeah. we keep going any longer. Okay. Peace. Peace.